Good morning, it's Laurie from Passionate Penny Pincher and I am so excited because my friend Margaret Ann is here and she is making biscuits and gravy with us this morning. She has been, she's done a lot of things. She has owned a restaurant in Rome, Georgia. Yeah. And um, she's been a culinary chef and shown taught culinary school, uh -huh. right? In Vermont. Yep. She's also been a realtor and a teacher and she's had so many fun things. But today she's teaching us how to make biscuits and gravy. We shared a couple weeks ago in the Dinner's Done Facebook group when she made, um, what were we making that day? Oh, uh, omelets. 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 And, and everybody loved her. <laughs> Um, but everybody loved her, so we would love for y'all to join us this morning. Um, if you're hopping on, and we see a few folks are hopping on, if you can tell us where you are from this morning, tell us what is your favorite recipe to make, and maybe something that you've been looking to make. Tell us if you're making anything yummy for dinner tonight. We would love to hear what you're making. But I am going to let Miss Margaret Ann start, and I'm going to kind of pull things over, and she's going to show us how to make biscuits. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I, I told Laurie I was looking for a recipe for biscuits, and I told her, I said, my mother and my grandmother would have a fit. I was looking for a recipe, because every morning, or at least every other morning, they'd come in and take a handful of flour, and before you know it, we had biscuits. Uh, I did make uh, one, so I wanted to show you what the finished product might look see, like. I'm going to hold this up for us so we can see. There's okay. the biscuits. Y'all see those? So that's what we're making. I'm so excited. Oh, I see folks are hopping on. I'm going to say real fast. Good morning, Melinda. Somebody says they're hungry. So oh, we oh, got it. Yes. yes. I'm going to turn this around real fast because I didn't do that. Let me get you turn around so that I can. Okay. Ah, which, when I do this, this is always a scary part. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Hang on, y'all. Huh, we're coming. We're just turning things around. Okay. Let's see. 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 let us cooking. A perfect biscuit, or as perfect as we can make them, should give you a hint as to how to open it up. And mm -hmm. if you notice, all of these biscuits have that little line there. And so you don't even need a knife to put the butter in. All you have to do is just open it up and it'll just pull right on off. Oh and gosh. then you can lather it with butter. But that's the way if your biscuit is flat and it doesn't have that, Maybe you need to rethink how you, you know, came up with it. So today we're going to make some biscuits. And I'm going to make just a small batch so that um, you can make it at home. We don't make 24 biscuits nowadays unless you're having a party or something. So we're going to start off with two cups of flour. This is just plain flour. Um, there are two brands that I really like. One I can't get here, but it has a, a plant in Rome, Georgia and it's white lily flour and so i went to the grocery store to try to get some and believe it or not they did not have it so um that was sort of a problem to me all right the first thing we're going to do is mix all the dry ingredients like you would for a cake or whatever and we're going to put a uh, t uh let's see a tablespoon am i doing yeah, a tablespoon? Here, see, there we go there's a tablespoon Sorry. okay let's do that's that that's tablespoon. okay i am using laurie's uh spoons measuring spoons which i'm I love because of the long handle and they fit in so well, but I'm just not used to them. So, you know, I'm used to the old fashioned kind that's just like this. So if you can, these make you feel so good. Okay, so a tablespoon of baking powder. And baking powder, of course, is what's gonna make them rise. And also, then we're gonna put a half of a teaspoon, which I think is this one, of baking soda. You know, so baking soda does wonders in science and uh, experiments and so forth because it helps bubble and make them do. So we want one of those. And then we want some salt. And we're going to put a half a teaspoon of salt in it. So we can do that. Uh, and what I do is I usually take a whisk. Um, so we're here. Oh, Let me move this out. That I use, but it's no big deal because I want to incorporate all of those ingredients really well. All right, and now the second most important thing, or maybe the first of doing, is what you what the fat you're going to use. I'm using Crisco Crisco shortening, but any kind of shortening will do. Also, if you prefer, you can use butter. It does just as well. It's just that I like that. All right, this is a little gadget. If you Let me don't come around here so I can watch from this side to make okay. sure we can see it. Okay. All right, if you don't have a pastry cutter, you might want to get one. That's what these are. And it will just save you a lot of time and wrist power, so forth, so that you can get it mixed up very good. 
one of the biggest things I think for people who are not used to making biscuits is when you read the recipe, they say cut in, and then they usually tell you to make it the shape of coarse cornmeal. But my goodness, who ever saw coarse cornmeal? You know, and so you have to just, I'm, I'm gonna do it for you and hopefully I can show you. As you see, you get, I'm cutting the fat into the flour and these little knobs like that, okay. that is, uh, it has not been cut in enough because as you see, it's nothing but Crisco shortening. And although we want some, we don't want them to be that big of a blob because if it doesn't have flour on it, that means that there's some flour molecules out there that don't have the fat and we don't want that to happen. So you may take a little bit more time than you think is necessary, but all you're doing is just cutting in. Should you not have a pastry cutter, don't worry about it, it'll take you more time. But you can use two knives, just two regular, oh, I can't get it up, table knives and put them opposite each other and do just like this. And it will do the same procedure, you know, as the pastry cutter. That's one of those gadgets I wished I had invented many years ago. A pastry cutter that would, uh, you know, be something really good. And so just keep working it. I know it's taking me a little bit more time than I would like, but keep working it until we can get it to just about, because I want, I think this is important, so I wouldn't spend this much time on it if it wasn't, but I think you need to, to watch. You can see around the edges, if you're careful, you can see what has not been incorporated. That's a good idea right there. See, that has not been incorporated enough. And it's a little, you probably can't get it on the, on your camera, but it shows just a little bit of that. Yeah, okay. Somebody asked if the shortening should be cold. Does it matter if the shortening? It is really cold? doesn't matter. Now, if you're doing a pastry or something, yes, but I don't think it's it makes any difference whatsoever okay. here. And how much fat did you? How much Crisco did we use? I used a third, third of a cup. cup. Okay, mm -hmm. and it was two cups of flour mm -hmm. and a third a cup of shortening. Right. And I'm looking over here at the recipe. Oh, okay. A half teaspoon baking soda and a half teaspoon salt and a tablespoon of baking powder is what she's got in here. Right. Thank y'all so much. Some people are sharing the video. Thank y'all for sharing the video. If you want to know someone who wants to make biscuits and gravy, hit that share button because that would be a great thing to share. Okay. okay. And now the other secret to making homemade southern biscuits is to use buttermilk. Oh. And I know that some of y'all are not familiar with buttermilk. That's not one of your weekly purchases. But it is so good. I love buttermilk. But then, you know... I'm from the South, so what we're gonna do is put approximately three-fourths of a cup, and I say approximately, and I know we could be using a, a liquid measurer, but this is just as good, because you're gonna have to see how wet your flour is, and all of that stuff depends on the humidity outside. There's just so many of those scientific things that make a big difference as to how much you're gonna use. So stir it up a little bit. And this is a hands-on experiment, okay? So do not, you know, Laurie can testify that I washed my hands. So these are clean <laughs> hands that are working here. But all you wanna do while it's still in the bowl, it makes it easier, is just simply to run it around. And what we're trying to do is to get all of these, see those little flower things that have not been incorporated? We want to get as many of them as we can. I probably would take more time getting them all in, but I don't want to take time doing all this stuff. So what I'm going to do is, as I work on this, Laurie can okay. show you some biscuits that I did maybe about a week ago, and they have been frozen, okay? And what we do with them is right before you pop them in the oven, you want to or you don't have to, but it makes them just a little bit better. Dab them a little bit with butter, and you can put them on a, um, a, a cookie sheet that has, sorry, I'm stuttering there, cookie sheet that has been either sprayed or lightly greased. 
some places, some people say you don't even have to do that. So, but you know your baking ware better than I do. And then I'm we'll put, put these, the yeah, Laurie will put see. those in the oven. Get those, there we go. And they'll be ready for us in no time. That's a good point though, that what you can do is make them ahead. So make double the recipe, it doubles beautifully. Double the recipe and make them ahead. Uh, put them on the cookie sheet and then put the cookie sheet in the freezer. And after they're frozen, you can put them in a baggie. And they'll keep a month or so, maybe longer than that, if you keep them in a baggie. Okay, and you can, and you bake them, um, what'd you say, 400? For... Yeah, between 400 and 450, and anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Okay. And I, I give those incomplete instructions simply because our ovens are all different. Yes. Okay, all right, we're going to put... A you need? little bit of flour. Let me go. Oh, oh sorry, I'm pulling okay. flour away from her. Sorry. Let's see. Yeah, I'm we got a lot of stuff going on over here. We do. And did you, oh, did you defrost the biscuits before freezing? I did not. Well, I, yes. I let's say they have been defrosting what maybe ten or fifteen yeah, minutes. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not important okay. to defrost them. Okay. Okay. So I sprayed a little, put a little flour on it. We don't want to incorporate too much flour because that'll make them tough. All right, but we want to make a, a mound. I would say to knead it, and you knead with this part of your hand. Okay. Never knead with your fingers, whether you're making pastry or okay. anything. Knead with the palm of your hand, and put it down, and then close it back up, and put it down, and close it back up. And what we're doing is just being sure that everything has been incorporated and we'll be able to roll it out, okay? And then you have this pretty little mound. That's perfect. And pat the little bottom. <laughs> Julia Child used to say, oh, it's just like a little baby's bottom. <laughs> so if that's something you relate to, <laughs> go for it. Okay. Um, any rolling pin will do. It's just this happens to be my favorite. I will tell you whether you're using pastry or whatever, roll the same direction. So roll out and then you can roll in now with pastry i usually turn it so that i can keep my circle but with biscuits that's not necessary and make yourself a circle make your biscuits as thick as you want usually about three quarters of an inch will do it and i think that's it those look fantastic i'm so impressed <laughs> and then all we do is take a cookie cutter now we had a little discussion beforehand about this. It is important that you have a very, what would you call that? Like a sharp, sharp edge, yeah. Sharp edge, because we, if you put something else like a glass down, that's going to mess up the cutting and keep it from rising like okay. it should. Never twist your biscuit cutter. Push it down like that. I did not know any of this. <laughs> it makes a big difference if okay. you twist it. It won't come out right. So just flour it a little bit and pump it down. And we'll be putting these on a cookie sheet in a few minutes. And then do the same thing over here. So. They look fantastic. Oh my goodness. I'm and thinking my biscuits look really bad now that I've seen your no, biscuits. No. They look great. And now you will have dough left over, obviously, because, you know, whatever size. These are great if you lose, use little uh, one and a half inch cookie cutters because they're perfect like for cocktail parties or, or you know, something that you want to put um, ham in or turkey or whatever. Okay, so I rolled it back out. Someone said the biscuits are huge. That's kind of because we didn't have the right, I don't have a real biscuit cutter, so Margaret Ann is using one of my cookie cutters. So they are a little bit big, but I love a big chunky biscuit. So I'm thrilled that they're big. Yeah. But make them the size you want yeah. them. You know, whatever, whatever you're using them for. Yes, they, they might be a little bit larger <laughs> than, than the average bear would eat, but they'll be fine, they'll be fine. My children are gonna be thrilled when they come <laughs> home and see these biscuits. And so. I would say that honestly, about eight biscuits could be made easily off okay. of this. Okay. Dough, if they were using maybe a two and a half inch cutter or something like that. Okay. That's great. All right, so we've used all this. This I call the cook's 
special, the leftovers. And sometimes it's bigger, it just depends. <laughs> and you just hold it out and you put that there. And then when it comes out, you get to taste it and you say, oh, I did a good job. That's, okay. that's perfect. I'm going to wash my hands now. And then we're going to make the gravy that's going to go over. Okay? I'm so excited about the gravy. I'm going to look through your all's questions while she's going over there. Guys, I am so thankful that Margaret on has hopped on to show us how to do this. If y'all have questions for her, if you can go ahead and leave those, I'm going to try to, we'll get through them. And she just has so much wisdom about how to cook. It's fantastic. So we're going to come over here and she's going to teach us how to make the gravy. The biscuits are actually, oh, the gravy, the sausage smells so good already. Um, somebody said, if y'all are out there and can tell us what you're making today, and if you have something else you'd love for her to teach us how to make, I know my daughter has specifically asked for chicken pot pie. That is big on her list. So, okay, she's going to come over here and work on the sausage gravy. Oh, should it start? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, before we started, uh, uh, we sort of scrambled the sausage. This is only a half a pound of sausage, mainly because we were just making a, a small amount of biscuits. But I do want to heat it back up yet. I have not drained the sausage at all, so the fat is still in them. And that's sort of important because to make the gravy, we are going to take the flour. And come to this side, I think. Let's see. So she's going to use the flour that's over here. And this is so simple. You'll have gravy every night using this. Okay, put in approximately two tablespoons and sprinkle it over your flour. And that's all we're going to do. Now some people like more pepper, some people would like more sage, but that you can do. And then just stir. I had no idea that, it was, that was what you added. I, I've never made. I've never, never made, made gravy. thickening gravy? No. Well, this, that's what we call it down south, is thickening, thickening gravy. Thickening gravy. Thickening white gravy. And what I, what I want to do is just cook the flour just a little bit, take off that sort of raw taste of it, and also incorporate it into the sausage so that you have your thickening agent in there. Okay, I think, and I'm going to feel it to that see that so it's good. hot. It's not quite hot enough yet. i probably get it too soon, but we're... We're getting there. And just stir. Someone says there, Mama, you use pepper and sage. Yes, yes. Okay. Pepper and sage. And and that's purely a matter of taste. Okay. Just how much you can. Uh, my husband did not like sage, and even though most of the time there is sage in the sausage, he was okay with that. But when we make dressing in the, you know, Christmas time and all, my mother always had to make him a separate little pot oh. without it. But she coddled him like that. <laughs> Me, well, she said, eat it anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but not my husband. Okay, this should be hot enough. And then we're just going to pour regular old milk in it. And I can't tell you how much, but you just sort of look at it and stir it. And in a few minutes, it'll get thick. And after it's gotten thick, if that's not, if you want more gravy and you don't want it that thick or you want it thinner or whatever, just, um, you know, add more milk. So simple. I cannot believe it's the seed, that that's all it takes too, is how frugal that is to make that. It's so simple. Oh, yeah. And it sticks to the ribs, yes. you know, because this is good southern farm food. Uh -oh. But it takes a few minutes to heat up and I, I do want to show you how thick it will get. Oh, it smells so good, y'all. <laughs> it smells so good. And I think you'll like it once you get it done. Can't wait. It's beginning to thicken a little bit more. Yeah, you can see it. It's boiling up. But just keep stirring it. That looks perfect. If you have a an inspiring cook in your aspiring cook I should say in the kitchen and helping you like your son or daughter or whatever have them stir while you can do something else all right do you see how it's thickening a little bit I do yeah. somebody asked what kind of sausage do you use well I like Jimmy Dean okay <laughs> okay but uh, you know any kind of sausage so and that's just because I like his flavorings 
there more than that's what I'm used to. Okay. You know. Okay. But don't I, I don't advise using Italian sausage. Okay. Uh, you can buy loose Italian sausage, but this is not an Italian meal. All right. Do you see how thick it is? Yes. Now? So now, and somebody asked, how much flour do you think? Would you guess? I'm for a half, for a half a pound of sausage, okay. I put in two tablespoons. Okay. Someone said they use evaporated milk. Is you can right? do that. Okay. Yeah, evaporated milk, certainly. That's just as good and gives a good taste and you don't have to worry about keeping it refrigerated yeah. and that sort of stuff. So, oh yeah, that would be fine. So, we now have thickening gravy. So good. It smells so good. And so we will put that on a biscuit. Maybe put a little pepper on top. And, uh, I got no plate out. If you get one, we'll, we'll, um... I'm going to pull the plate out and we'll show you. Without losing my camera. Oh, sorry, y'all. My camera skills. I only have so many hands. We need, like, yeah. a, we need a, we need a camera crew to come out and watch there us. They would go. die yes. laughing at us. All right, so our plate, let's open our biscuits and it's all together. But we'll open it up. I would not suggest heating biscuits in the microwave. Oh, so how do you, do you warm them or just? Yeah, I would definitely warm them. But what you do is just simply uh, put them in tin foil or aluminum foil or whatever you call it. And um, put them in the oven. Okay. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Oh my goodness, the margarine. It looks so good. And I think, where do you think our oven? Let's see where our biscuits are. Oh, right yeah, over here. Let's, let's see look. how these are doing. Oh, I didn't put the timer on. So I guess. We'll have to watch oh, them. They're just about ready. They're almost ready. Y'all see that? Doesn't it look good? I love it. We'll get you. And give these, them? these were the frozen biscuits. And if you like them lighter like this, then they're fine. They're done. Okay. You know, and if you're going to reheat might, them, you might want to take them I out now. We may want to. Let's go ahead. I've got to get my, let me get my thing out. Y'all, this is what's so funny here. I'm going to turn this around so y'all can. And then I'll pull out my little oven mitt. And then we can see your all's questions. Y'all let us know what questions you have about stuff. And if you have anything else you'd love us to try making, we would love to know what you would love to see. As long as Margaret Ann's willing to come over and cook with me, that's the thing. Oh, I love it. Laura, it's such a delight. And I know y'all know that because you get to see her every morning. And usually I don't get to see her except on Thursday mornings at Bible study. That's right. All right. Look so at our biscuits. Do y'all see those? Oh my goodness, they look so good. Someone says, good morning. Yet, yeah. yummy, inspired to make your own gravy. I know after we did the omelet in the dinner study group, I had several people show me how they had made a um, an omelet. So I was super excited because I do not, I can cook, but I cook basically from recipes. I don't really like cook like this from scratch very often. I certainly don't cook without a measurement. Uh -oh. So the fact that she can come and tell us how to do things without all of that is amazing. Someone asked how you make your dressing at Thanksgiving. Oh, cornbread. Cornbread. Lots of, <laughs> lots of celery, okay. lots of um, onions, and then all your seasonings and stuff. I want you to see the biscuit that we just took out of the oven. And this is also the biscuit that's been frozen for a week. Y'all see that? And think about how much cheaper it is to make this than it is. The Grand's biscuits, I'll tell you typically what I do, honestly, is I make yeah. the Grand's <laughs> ones. And when you think about how much less money this is, it is so frugal to make this for sure. Biscuits and gravy are my favorite breakfast. I haven't had biscuits and gravy thing forever, so I'm totally having this for breakfast this right, morning. Let's put some okay. butter in okay. it. Open it oh, up. It opens right. Oh See, my it gosh, opened perfectly. Okay. I have to totally try this biscuit right here in front of you guys. Oh, yes. I don't think I I've ever eaten too. food on Facebook Live, but, oh. you know. I think I have to. Oh my gosh, it looks so there we go. good. Okay, I'm gonna try it. Do you want to bite of one? Oh okay. no, I'll, I'll let you try. Do you want me the ones to try? Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, what are your questions? It's so hard to eat grands after you get used to homemade. Oh my goodness, if I get used to homemade, I, it'll, but be, it'll be save you money. It will save me money. And okay. and since you can freeze them, it's mm. just mm. how does it taste? It's fantastic. <laughs> I don't want to eat on foods. On, oh my goodness, it's so good. And you can have your sausage and have this. Oh my goodness, I can't eat all that. Oh my goodness, y'all. It's good. You need to make these. Someone said she's making me homesick for Eastern Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Margaret Ann is from Rome, Georgia. Rome, Georgia. And Eastern Tennessee is very close, as you know, because I'm up in the corner 
of Northwest Georgia, the foothills oh, of the okay. Appalachians. I'm, try. I'm gonna try yeah. bite real fast because you know on TV when they show people making food, they always have people try it. So yeah, I'll try so it out try. Over here. Yes. I'm gonna try it out over here. See what you think with the gravy. And then I'm gonna. This, I, I did not work out this morning, so I'm gonna feel really. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, the gravy's perfect. Is it mm -hmm. good? Mm -hmm. And do you see how simple it is? Now that I saw it, I mean, that's so easy. Yeah. There was nothing. Spr nothing. nothing. Nothing at all. Y'all, it's really, really good. You need to go make this. We're going to go ahead and we will um, hopefully, I mean, get kind of directions on how to do this. And we'll post them once I kind of figure it out. Um, we'll try to listen and see what oh, exactly she used. So we can post the recipe for you guys of us who are not, who would need, like, I just need a recipe. Okay. Like, I'll be, but I think watching and seeing how she crumbled it all together helps so much. Um, anyways, y'all, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to see if there's other questions real fast and then we'll hop off and let you guys, someone said, do you use all purpose flour? Yes, I do use all purpose. You can use, you can substitute self rising if that's what you like. I just don't do it at home simply because I like to control things, you know. So um, I can put in as much or, or as little as I like. But if you have self-rising, just leave out all of the baking powder, the salt, and the baking soda. Just leave it out and use your flour and your Crisco or your butter or whatever, and then your buttermilk. Okay, and the buttermilk is... Now, do you ever use buttermilk? I have my penny pincher trick is I never buy buttermilk. I always use milk and, and what's Works it called? Works just vinegar. as well. So you use, what is it, like a cup of milk and then you add, I think I add like a couple teaspoons of a teaspoon, vinegar, yeah, a teaspoon of vinegar. A teaspoon of it. And you can also use lemon juice. You know. Oh. So lemon, any sort of acid yeah. is all you need to make buttermilk. So and if you're home. Rest for a few minutes. Yeah. So if you're home this morning and struggling, you can definitely do that. Yes. Thank y'all so much. Yes. We've enjoyed talking to you guys and we love seeing it. Um, let us know what you'd love her to make. If you, I hope she'll come back and do it. You guys have the best morning and we'll see you Monday morning. Talk to you Thank soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.